Hello everybody, Walters954 here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to delete Apex code from production without needing to download additional tools like Ant or Eclipse or a Visual Studio code. This is really helpful when you have legacy code that you want to delete and you kind of want to do it quickly or you don't want to go through the hassle of you know using third party programs to get it done. So for this, we're going to be using Workbench, which is a website with a lot of utilities for Salesforce. You can see your metadata, manipulate your data, and it's really useful. We are also going to be using this specific deployment technique of destructive changes. Uh, this can sound a little scary, but really we're just creating two files and uploading that into Workbench, and then it will delete the classes for us. So just for the setup, we have this Apex class. I do recommend commenting out the code and deploying it to production and testing out to make sure that nothing has changed. We also have some pages and triggers to delete as well, which the pages I think you can delete very easily through configuration, but the triggers and classes, you can't delete them through configuration. You can only delete them through a method like this, which is deployment. All right, so let's jump into it. We are going to go over into this guide and we can see that there are two key components to this deployment. One is the destructive changes.xml, which we're going to be creating a file very similar to this, which has the type of information that we want to delete and then the actual thing that we want to delete. So for example, this is doing a custom object of the name my custom object, but in our case, we want to do Apex classes because those can't be deleted inside of configuration. Custom objects can be deleted inside of configuration. The second thing we'll need is a package.xml um, that just has the version in it. Very simple, very plain. So I'm going to open up my file explorer here, right click and go to new text document going to paste in the destructive changes.xml and save that. So basically if Salesforce gets a file, an XML file named destructive changes.xml, then it will know to run the removal script on its end or to remove. It's a removal deployment. Uh, we're going to make sure that this is an XML file. If you're in Windows, go to view and file name extensions and that way you can double check that this is a .xml. The next one that we're going to be creating is package.xml. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to open these up in the text editor of my choice. For me, that is Visual Studio Code. And then while I'm here, let me also open up that package XML. We're going to be editing both of those a little bit. Bring that over. And for let's start with the package XML since it's a little bit easier. All we're gonna do is open up this code here, copy it. And if I can find this, oh, that's if I can find my Visual Studio. We're gonna paste that in. Make sure it's a the current version that you're on. It's okay if it's lower versions, but I like to at least keep it updated or to match it to the workbench version. And then let's go to destructive changes.xml. We're gonna copy this. Paste it in here. So we're gonna need to make a couple changes based on the different name for this, the type sections. So I'm gonna delete this because we're not trying to delete custom objects. We are trying to delete Apex classes. And then the name of our class, which is delete me class, if I could spell. So if we save this, I'm gonna save it now and deploy it. Uh, it should delete the delete me class. And let's just test this out really quickly. So the next step is to select both of our XML documents, right click, and we're going to send to a zip. So we're creating a zip file, save that. 
when we go into the zip, the two files that we should have are the destructive changes and the package.xml. There shouldn't be anything else or uh, there shouldn't be any folders. Now we're going to log into Workbench, making sure our API version is correct. There we go. I'm logged into my trailhead org. I'm going to go to deploy. Choose file. This is that zip file that we just had. We're going to roll back on errors do single package. And then if this is going to production, we're going to run all local tests. Hit next. This is just a warning saying that, hey, you're going to be making modifications to your org. Gonna hit deploy. So now this is kind of like the status of the deployment and how things are going. It'll give you updates. But if we wanted to check that in Salesforce, we could also go to the status, um, just like a regular deployment to see what's going on here. Cool, it looks like that worked. So let's go to our Apex classes and check things out. And we can see that delete me.xml is no longer there. Just to show some other types of um, metadata changes. So let's do Apex page. And I'm pretty sure it's called delete me.page. And then let's also do multiple types. So we're going to remove triggers in here as well. And I think it's delete me trigger. And we can also have multiple members too. So if we wanted to delete a bunch of triggers together, we would just add them as members, but there would only be one name. Save that, go back into here where we're going to recreate our XML file because the old one has the old information in it. Double checking that it's still in one folder, perfect. And then just for the sake of making sure that there actually is nothing in here, let's check out. We have delete me trigger and then delete me trigger two. Let's go back to migrations, deploying, Choose our package dot zip roll back. I'm going to do uh, no test run just for this one. So it happens pretty quickly. Same warning. Let's go to the status while that's loading up. Let me see, we've got a deployment failure and it looks like I have a typo in here. Oh no. It's not a typo, that's one from before. This looks like it was successful, so maybe it's done. And there you have it, they are gone. So that's how you delete using Workbench. There's a lot of other really neat tools in here that I use all the time. I'll probably end up making additional videos, but that's how you can delete metadata and Apex code using Workbench and just some file creation. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you use any other tools to delete code or metadata from your org and if you've used Workbench before. Thanks so much for watching and remember, I believe in you.